Welcome Alkaringa viewers. In this video, I will be synthesizing 1-phenyl-2-nitropropion from benzaldehyde and nitroethane. Similar to the previous video, this reaction is called the Henry reaction or the nitroaldyl reaction. The Henry reaction has often been used, due to its highly functional scaffold and universal synthetic capabilities by easy manipulation of both the nitro and hydroxyl functional groups to make beta nitro alcohols, which is the conventional product of the Henry reaction. These nitro alcohols can be easily converted to nitro alkenes via a dehydration pathway. These intermediates has found use in various pharmaceutical applications. To start the experiment, add 5 ml of ethanol into a round bottom flask. Start stirring. On top of that, add 2.02 ml of nitroethane. Then, add 0.3 ml of N-butylamine. After that, add 2.88 ml of benzaldehyde slowly over 2 minutes. After all of the reagents have been added, attach a Liebig condenser to the round bottom flask and attach a calcium chloride drying tube to the end of it. Connect a cold water pump to the condenser. Don't forget to turn the water pump on. Turn the hot plate on and set the knob quarter way. Start timing the experiment and leave the mixture to stir at reflux for 8 hours. Make sure to wrap the flask with aluminium foil as well. After 4 hours, we can see that the mixture has turned into a yellow, orange color. After 8 hours, turn the heating off and remove the aluminium wrapped around the flask. As we can see, the mixture has taken a red-orange color. Now, time for the chemistry. In brief, benzaldehyde and nitroethane react in the presence of N-butylamine base to form 1-phenyl-2-nitropropion. Interestingly, 1-phenyl-2-nitropropion is the only major product formed when N-butylamine base is employed. To elaborate, N-butylamine is a primary amine which is organic soluble, thus the requirements of minimal steric hindrance around the amine moiety and high concentration of this reagent in the organic phase are easily met. Hence, N-butylamine facilitates the formation of 1-phenyl-2-nitropropion via the base-catalyzed pathway. Now, let the mixture cool to room temperature, turn the water pump and disassemble the reflux condenser. Then, remove the solvent under vacuum or pour the contents into a beaker and evaporate the solvent under low heat. After a while, you will be left with a mass of yellow crystals. This should be crude 1-phenyl-2-nitropropene. Get the crude 1-phenyl-2-nitropropene, and carry out vacuum filtration. In order to get the remaining crystals out of the beaker, add a small amount of cold ethanol, swirl and pour the contents into the Buchner funnel. Leave the crystals to dry on the pump for a few minutes. Now, we need to carry out recrystallization in boiling ethanol. Add the crude crystals into a beaker. Place the beaker onto a hot plate and add around 6 ml of ethanol. Make sure to add in a stir bar as well. Turn the hot plate and stirring on. After a short while, the crystals have all dissolved in the boiling ethanol. The solution has a clear yellow color. After the solvent has evaporated to around half its volume, turn the hot plate off and carry out a quick hot filtration. Leave the filtered solution to cool down to room temperature. Now, we have to induce crystallization on the solution. Get a speck of 1-phenyl-2-nitropropene crystal on the end of a glass rod or glass thermometer and poke the solution. Immediately, we see a rapid formation of a yellow crystalline mass. This should be pure 1-phenyl-2-nitropropene. It was absolutely beautiful observing this. Crush and filter out the crystals. Place the crystals on a weigh boat.
Okay, now we have to carry out a melting point test to check the purity of the product. Get a small amount of crystals and drop it into a glass tube. Insert a thermometer directly down into the crystals. Place the glass tube onto the hot plate and start heating very slowly. After a short while, we see the crystals starting to melt at around 60 degrees Celsius. Then, we see that all of the crystals have melted at around 64 degrees Celsius. This means that our 1-phenyl-2-nitropropene has a melting point range of 60 to 64 degrees Celsius. The literature has it at 64 to 66 degrees Celsius. This test confirms that our material is relatively pure. The yield of the nitropropion is 2.48 grams, which is okay. Transfer the material into a glass vial and seal it off with parafilm. Store the material in a cool, dark and dry place.